Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Continuing with the journey of Islamic reminders pertaining to good manners we come to a beautiful topic today which is ever so important as we will come to know as we go through it with Allah's permission and that is the topic of at-tawadu' 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 means to have humility and to be humble and it's the opposite of being arrogant and trying to seek the praise of people and to have esteem in the eyes of people. So humility is that you don't care about really and truly what people are thinking, you don't seek for people's praise and you try to be humble and gentle in all situations as opposed to being arrogant and boastful and prideful. So this is a beautiful etiquette as we know and there is much encouragement for it in the Quran and the Sunnah. For example, in the Quran Al-Kareem, to have targhib, a targhib is like encouragement for it. In the Quran, we have the statement of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in Surah Al-Furqan, وَإِبَادُ رَحْمَانَ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ حَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاتَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا So in this Surah, Surah Al-Furqan, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is mentioning in this part of the Surah a variety of characteristics which are blessed a variety of characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising the believers for so he says and the slaves of the merciful they are the ones that they walk upon the earth hawnan hawnan is to be walking in a tranquil manner not to be boastful and loud and brash and arrogant not to be walking with undignified pride not to be walking around causing you know unwanted negativity rather wherever you go you walk in a humble manner and you leave alone an athar an effect a trace of positivity that's what it means in this verse and so walking in a boastful manner is something which is hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's something which is looked down upon and it's something which Allah despises except for in one situation in one situation which is in the situation of battle if a Muslim has to fight in order to preserve himself or his family or the religion then this is in a situation when the person can walk in a, in a boastful manner in a strong proud arrogant type of manner but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah for example Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu man yaltadda minkum an dinihi fasawfa yati allahu biqawmin aw you who believe Whomsoever of you turns back from your religion, they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come with the people. They will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will love them. They will be humble and they will be soft and gentle with the believers. And they will have strong honor and they will be tough and rough with the enemies that they have from amongst the disbelievers. And Imam Ibn Kathir, Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala, the great scholar of Tafsir, he said, Hadi sifat al mu'minin la kamul, an yakuna ahaduhum mutawadian li akhihi wa waliyihi. He said, Ibn Kathir, may Allah have mercy upon him, that this is the description that Allah has mentioned, wa ibadu rahman al ladina yamshuna fil aldi hawna, and also this description here that we mentioned, um, that the believer is gentle towards his brother and his sister. They are supporters of one, one another. Mutaazizan ala khasmihi wa aduhi. But however, when it comes to the enemy in times of battle and other serious situations, then this person, the same person that was humble, has now pride and strength and honor in a way that will put fear into the enemy. And also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this in Surah Al Fatih. The reason I'm mentioning this, by the way, is because a lot of people, when they talk about humility, they make the topic imbalanced they forget to mention the other side that the person the believer is supposed to have strength also so i'm just going to quickly mention these points then we'll come back to the main topic of humility allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-fatih muhammad rasulullah muhammad is the messenger of allah and those who believe with muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam they are harsh upon their enemies from amongst the disbelievers and they are merciful amongst themselves so this is when a Muslim has to fight an enemy, the person will be strong and he will have that type of honor and that type of boastfulness and that type of pr pride. However, outside of that, it doesn't exist. To the extent that an, a Muslim cannot um, mistreat a non-Muslim even an atom's worth of mistreatment. 
Look at this hadith, for example, in, in Abi Dawood, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that whoever wrongs a person, meaning a non-Muslim, that is protected by a covenant, a covenant meaning that they come to the Muslim lands with a passport or something of that nature, a right to stay and to live with the Muslims. Whoever mistreats this person, a non-Muslim, and violates his rights or burdens him with more than he can bear in terms of work, etc., or takes something from him without his consent, then I, Muhammad وسلم, will be the one that will be defending this person on the Day of Judgment. Meaning that if you take the non-Muslims' rights, then Muhammad وسلم, will be opposing you on the Day of Judgment and defending the rights of the non-Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about humility in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Qasas, تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ أُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادِ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Jannah, the eternal abode, is for those people that they don't want to be haughty and arrogant in the earth, and nor do they want to cause corruption. And the aqiba لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And the end result, the end victory, is for the believers. Imam ibn Kathir, Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Yukhbirullah ta'ala anna dar al-akhira wa na'imaha al-muqeem alladhi la yahul wa la yazul that this everlasting abode which is in the hereafter which will never be removed and never will it depart ja'alaha li ibadihi al-mu'minin al-mutawadi'ayn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it for his slaves the, the male of them and the female of them that have humility lilladhina la yuriduna uluwan fil ard for those that do not want to be arrogant and haughty and boastful upon the earth. أي ترفعا على خلق الله وتعاظما عليهم وتجبرا بهم ولا فسادا فيهم meaning that they don't want to be from those who are boastful and arrogant and those that cause corruption on the earth and nor, they do, nor do they want to be from those who are oppressive. Rather, they want to have this beautiful character, characteristic of being humble. Also in the Sunnah, we find much encouragement with the Prophet Sallallahu said, for example, in Sahih Muslim, in the Hadith of Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu said, ما نقصت صدقة من مال That when you give charity, it doesn't decrease your wealth. وما زاد الله عبدا بعفو إلا عزا And that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does not increase a slave when they forgive other people for their mistakes, except that Allah increases them in honor. وما تواداء أحد إلا إلا رفعه الله and no slave of Allah has humility for the sake of Allah, tries to be humble for the sake of Allah, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises that slave of him, male or female, in this world and in the hereafter. So the raising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his slaves, when they try to be humble, is either going to be in this world, or it's going to be in the next world, or it's going to be a situation that in both worlds, that person will be raised because they try to be humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many people, they strut around the earth, they walk around being boastful and arrogant and they think that they are people that are special. But in reality, they are, dis they are, they are despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are hated in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have no value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they live a life which is a life of being ungrateful to Allah, a life of having disbelief towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet you have the opposite. You have a group of people, may Allah make us from them, that they're not well known. They don't have a high status maybe in society. They're not looked upon with envy. When they speak, people don't really want to listen to them maybe. When they walk, they're not really noticed. However, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have a huge status. They are people that are quiet, simple. They don't make a lot of noise. They don't bring a lot of attention to themselves. However, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are loved and they are raised high. Why? Because they always try to be humble and they always try to seek Allah's pleasure and they don't try to be arrogant. And again, in Sahih Muslim, we have another beautiful hadith. Inna Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu says, Inna Allah awha ilayya an tawadau. The Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had revealed to me that you should all have humility, O believers. Hatta la yafkhara ahadun ala ahad. To the extent, you should be humble to the extent that none of you is boastful or pride, pride has pride and arrogance above his brother or sister believer. وَلَا يَبْغِي أَحَدٌ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٌ And none of you will ever transgress upon the rights of another. Shaykh Uthaymin ta'ala when talking about this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that we should all have humility, Shaykh Uthaymin ta'ala he had some beautiful words to say. He said, أَنْ يَتَوَادْعَ كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ لِلْآخِرِ That everybody should be humble in regards to their relationship with the next person. 
and they shouldn't raise themselves arrogantly above the next person rather the person in their interaction with the next person should equate them to themselves they should treat them as they want to be to be treated or rather they should treat them even better than they expect treatment for themselves and it used to be from the way of the Salaf, the righteous predecessors before us, that one of them, they would look to somebody who had a lower status in society, right, um, than them. They would then treat this person as though they were a young child of theirs. Yani they wouldn't be arrogant to them, rather they would treat them with kindness. And the one, who was older, they would treat this person like it was their father. And the one who was similar to them in age and status, they would treat them like their brother. So they would look to the one that was older than them and they would treat them with generosity and um, they would treat them with a lot of honor. And they would look to the one that was younger than them or less in status with ishfaq and rahmah, with mercy and compassion. And to the one that is similar to them in age or in status, they would treat them as though they were equal, right? They wouldn't be haughty and arrogant above them. So none of them would oppress one another. And this is from the things which is imperative upon a person that they embody themselves, that they have embodied within them this type of humility. That they should have a humility for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they should be humble with regards to their brothers and sisters from amongst the Muslims. And he said elsewhere the same scholar Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala وَهَذَا يَعْنِي أَنَّ الْإِنسَانِ إِذَا كَيْنَ بَيْنَ أُنَاسٍ مُتَّوَسِطِّيَ الْحَالِ لَا يَسْتَطِيُونَ لِبَاسَ الرَّفِيعِ And this also entails that if a believer is amongst a community that are in the middle level of economic status, right? They're not able to really wear expensive clothing. Then that person, even though he's richer or she is richer than them, then he or she should start to wear the clothing that that middle level level of economic status people wear. So that the hearts of these that cannot afford very expensive clothing will not be broken when they see if they see you wearing very expensive clothing. So also from being humility is to take this into consideration, that the people I'm amongst, I should look at their level of economic uh, status. If they can't afford the expensive items, then I really shouldn't wear expensive items in front of them. And so that the person isn't boastful and proud when he mixes with them. For due to this, then this person will be getting this amazing reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of being raised high in the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, if the person, the believer, is amongst people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given wealth to, they're of good status, high status economically. Uh, so these people they wear clothing which is expensive but it's not haram then it's better for the person to dress like them if he is able to do so because in this situation Allah loves beauty and he loves to see beauty and it's no doubt that if a person is between a group of people that have a high status in sense of economic ability and they wear and they wear expensive beautiful clothing and that person chooses though he has the ability to buy similar clothing he chooses to wear clothing which is much less then this will be treated or consider that the person is wearing libas al-shuhra. Libas al-shuhra is a type of clothing when you oppose the clothing of society, right? And you try to be different to everybody else. That is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes and it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be punished for, that the person will be punished for. فَالْإِنسَانْ يَنْظُرُ مَا تَقْتَدِهِ الْحَالِ So the person looks to the situation and acts accordingly in the situation. So as a summary, as a mulakhaz, what Shaykh Uthaymin was saying here, and he's giving a much wider understanding of humility, 
He's saying that it also includes that when you mix with a group of people and these people aren't able to afford, uh, you know, expensive type of clothing and you are able to afford that expensive type of clothing, then you shouldn't wear expensive clothing in front of them because then it will make them feel sad and it will make them feel that they're losing out. Like, look at you wearing all the beautiful clothing and we can't afford to wear it, it will hurt them, right? So you, instead from your humility, you dress down for that particular level of society. However, if you're in a society where everybody is economically well or the majority are quite econom economically well off, then it's okay for you to wear good clothing and beautiful clothing like everybody else is wearing. Rather, it's recommended for you to wear good clothing and beautiful clothing like everybody else is recommended as long as it's halal and it's not done for showing off, etc, etc. From humility, having humility and being humble is to love to be with those who have less. This is from one of the signs that a person is humble. Why? Because the rich in general, you will find that when you mix with the rich in general, they tend to have a bit of arrogance about them. They tend to have more pride and more arrogance. So to want to mix with the poor is something that a believer finds that gives him tranquility or her tranquility and gives them a good effect on their souls. It's mentioned in Fayd al-Qadir that it was said to Ibn Mu'ad, uh, حبك الفقراء that Ibn Mu'ad he said sorry حبك الفقراء من أخلاق المرسلين that your love for the poor is from the etiquette of the messengers وإثارك مجالستهم من علامات صالحين and your preferring their gatherings to be in their gatherings is from the signs of the righteous وفرارك منهم من علامات المنافقين and you avoiding them and staying away from them staying away from the poor people is a sign of your hypocrisy. So it's always important we should look at what the Salaf has said and there's some beautiful statements about what the Salaf has said regarding humility. Why do we need to always look back to the Salaf? When we mention this word the Salaf we're talking about the first three generations of Muslims because the Prophet وسلم, said The best of people are my generation the Prophet وسلم, said meaning him and his companions then those who follow them, meaning the Tabi'een, and those who follow them, meaning the students of the Tabi'een. So Islam, as we know, from each uh, part in history, it's getting watered down and it's being challenged and it's being changed. However, if you want to truly know how, the, how a Muslim should behave and what they should believe and how, what their outlook should be and, and you know, a true role model for the Muslims, you have to look back to the early Muslims of those three golden generations that the Prophet ﷺ gave tazkiyah to, that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in high status. So the way to know about any topic is to look back to what they said, because that is the true understanding of Islam, because they were the best of generations and they were the closest to revelation. So the Salaf, they said many beautiful things pertaining to humility. For example, we have the statement of our mother, Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu She said, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَغْفُلُونَ أَفْضَلِ الْإِبَادَةِ She said, may Allah be pleased with her, you are overlooking and being negligent pertaining to the best acts of worship. التواضع, to be humble for the sake of Allah, to have humility for the sake of Allah, to not be boastful and arrogant and want to be known in society. وَسُئِلَ فُضَيْلِ ibn عَيَادْ and التَّوَاضِعِ And فضيل ibn عَيَادْ, one of these great scholars that we have in the history of Islam, he was asked, what is tawadi'? What is humility? And he gave a very interesting answer. He said, يَخْدَعَ لِلْحَقِّ He said, it is a person, it is that a person submits themselves to the truth. وَيَنْقَادُ لَهُ And the person follows whatever is contained within that truth. وَيَقْبَلَهُ مِمَّنْ قَالَهُ And he accepts it from wherever that truth has come. So it's very important that for a person to have humility when that when truth comes to them, they teach their soul to accept that truth. So many a time, somebody may tell us something, but in our eyes that person is a lot less than us in status. Maybe you're a student of knowledge, maybe you're a sheikh, maybe you're somebody who has a lot of knowledge, and now here you have somebody who doesn't have much knowledge telling you something and that thing happens to be the truth or that thing happens to be from the gems of guidance but you don't really pay heed to it you don't really give it attention because it's coming from somebody who you in your imagination is thinking that they're lower than you in status the good soul is not like that the good soul loves to hear the truth and accepts the truth from no matter where it comes and from no matter who it comes from so that is also from humility that we accept the truth 
and that we're not arrogant towards the truth and that we implement the truth within our lives no matter who it comes from. In fact, you'll be surprised to know that even if it comes from a non-Muslim who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it happens to be truthful and it has to be, happens to be something which coincides with the guidance of Islam, then we should accept it because in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا يَجْدِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ أَلَا أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا أَعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِتَقْوَى That do not let your dislike for a people cause you not to be just. Rather be just for that is more close and that is better in terms of piety. That is closer to being uh, to, to having piety, right? And from, from being just is that you accept the truth from even the non-Muslims if they bring truth, if they bring words of truth to us. So this is something that we really have to teach ourselves to act upon, that we are people that look for truth no matter where it comes from, as long as it's truth and it abides by the, and it coincides with the teachings of Islam, it doesn't contradict the teachings of Islam, then we accept that truth and we implement that truth. And that's a beautiful teaching if we were to implement it and we were to embody that, you can imagine how many people would be amazed by the teachings of Islam and want to enter into Islam. The problem is that we have all these beautiful etiquettes yet we don't implement them as they're supposed to be implemented. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that al-kibr is batr al-haq wa ghamtu nas That kibr, arrogance and pride from its core essence is to reject the truth when it comes to you and to look down upon the people. So we shouldn't reject the truth and nor should we look down upon the people. So another statement of one of the famous scholars of Islam from the Salaf, Ibn Mubarak, Ibn, Ibn al-Mubarak rahimullah ta'ala this great scholar and warrior in Islam he said ra'su tawadu an tad'a nafsaka inda man huwa dunak fi ni'mati dunya he said the peak of humility is that you place yourself alongside a person who is less than you in status right this person is less than you in, than you in status in society maybe it's a poor person Maybe it's a person that has a disability. However, your interaction with that person is that you place yourself with that person You place yourself with him or with her to the extent that you show to this person that between you and them there is no difference. Even though I have something more than you from the dunya, but the way I'm interacting with you you couldn't tell that between me and you, the poorer person or the more disadvantaged person, that there is a difference between us. So this is a beautiful statement. We don't let the wealth and the bounties that we have cause us to be arrogant uh, when we're interacting with people that are less fortunate than us. And because Islam is always balanced, we do the same with those who are higher than us in status, who have more than us in status in terms of uh, worldly wealth or worldly position. We don't allow our lower position or our lower status of wealth to cause that person to think that they are better than us or that they can walk over us. Rather, we have within us uh, a type of honor that shows them that we are not people that are to be walked over, right? Um, now, so the one who has humility is soft with the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, this person has honor to the extent that they don't allow people to humiliate them uh, if, they, if they are able to do so, right? And we have to remind ourselves regularly that the best way to live in this dunya is to live without having a tarafu' without having this arrogance. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Qasas تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عَلُومٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا that is the hereafter, that is the paradise that we are going to make it for, or we have made it for, those that do not seek to have ulu. They do not seek to be haughty and above people in the earth, nor do they look for corruption. And the end is for the believers. The true end is for the believers. The Prophet wasallam, as we know, he was the best example for all of the etiquettes that we are talking about in this course. And even more so for the etiquette pertaining to humility. The Prophet Sallallahu humility was absolutely amazing. The Prophet Sallallahu was the one who receives revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He interacts with the greatest of angels, Jibreel Alayhi Salaam and other angels. He has all of the people under his subjugation, meaning that they all are willing to give their lives for him. He's in, he's in charge of them. He's the leader. Yet you'll be amazed at the type of humility the Prophet Sallallahu would have. Take for example, 
the hadith in Abi Dawood where the Prophet ﷺ is described, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم يَجِسُ بَيْنَ ذَهْرَيْ أَصْحَابِهِ That the Prophet ﷺ used to sit amongst his companions. فَيَجِيءُ الْغَرِيبُ فَلَا يَدْرِي أَيُّهُمْ هُوَ حَتَّى يَسْأَلُ So a person would come that was not from the town and didn't know the people and he would come to the gathering and he wouldn't be able to distinguish the Prophet ﷺ from the rest of his companions. So it would be that this person would have to ask, where is the Prophet ﷺ, right? He wouldn't be able to distinguish this greatest king of the kings of this earth from amongst the rest of the companions who were poor and had very little in this life. The Prophet ﷺ didn't take for him a high position. In Sahih al-Bukhari, it's also mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تتروني كما أطرت النصارى إيسى بن مريم إنما أنا عبد الله فقولوا عبد الله ورسوله The Prophet ﷺ said, Do not exaggerate in my praise like the Christians have exaggerated with regards to Jesus, peace be upon him. Rather, I am Allah's slave, so say the slave of Allah and the messenger of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ never looked for high status, though he had the highest status and he has the highest status out of all of the creation. The Prophet ﷺ at times being the leader of the army, having so much to do, being the governor of the city and everything else that came along with it as well as being the Prophet. Though this was the description of the Prophet ﷺ, he would at times walk through the streets of Medina and he would see children and he would stop to give them salam and he will stop to wipe over their heads to show them love. So this is the humility that the Prophet ﷺ had and this is how we should embody humility. The Prophet ﷺ at times, I, I, I'm trying to stress at times because the majority of the time he was not like this, the majority of the time he was busy outside combating the enemies of Islam, spreading the message of Islam, helping the Muslims wherever they be. At times when the Prophet ﷺ was in his house, it was asked to Aisha radiallahu anha, ma kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yasla'u fi bayti, what would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do in his house? So she said, kana yakunu fi mehnati ahlihi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be in the service of his family, ta'ni khidmati ahlihi, fa idha hadrata salah, kharaja ila salah. But whenever the prayer would come upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he would drop everything and he would go out to pray with the Muslims. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he had the free time, and he was free from these many obligations that he had. When he was in the house, he was humble enough to help his wives, humble enough to help his families, right? And this is how the believer is supposed to be. The believer is always supposed to strive against their souls that they, so that they can help one another, be humble towards another, one another, not be arrogant in their interactions with each other, especially within the realms of family interaction. The husband has to be very careful of how he treats his wife and his children and the wife has to be very careful of how she treats her children and her husband they both have to race with one another trying to be humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more humble you are in your interactions the more the love will increase between the hearts and this goes for outside of the realms of being a husband and wife also whenever you interact with people with humility and good manners you will occupy their hearts so this is one of the best ways to interact with the people. Why? Because one of our greatest objectives of living on this life is to guide people to Islam. So if people see from us that we are people of humility, though we have strength, though we are intellectually advanced, though we may have a lot of money, but if they see from us that we are generally humbly, humble people and we always try to leave a positive effect from our interactions, they are more likely then to listen to what we have to say pertaining to Islam and the teachings of Islam. And this is the greatest objective that we can achieve in this dunya, is to guide people towards Islam. Whether they accept it or they don't accept it, at least their hatred for Islam and their arrogance, uh, so their ignorance pertaining to Islam will be removed. If they don't enter into Islam, then at least they will have more appreciation for Islam. So it's imperative that we embody humility in the way we behave, but at the same time we have to have strength and honor there has to be a good balance there. And the way that we do this, have this humility, is, be remi is through reminding ourselves regularly the rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has contained or given uh, for those who establish humility within themselves. Because many a time we forget, many a time we allow ourselves to get arrogant, many a times we allow ourselves to think that we're someone special. And the only way that we can bring ourselves back 
to how we're supposed to be is by listening to reminders pertaining to such topics or by reading about them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan if there's any questions for anybody that they want to ask then feel free inshallah ta'ala